The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 29th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I, when you and I, uh, boy, I've totally lost uh, track there. That's a, that's an old people's thing out there. So uh, I, I forgot where I was in my. <laughs> uh, here's what I do know is that when when uh, you and I can, boy, I really just screwed up. That's that's kind of a weird thing. That's a weird thing. Um, in any event, let's do this. Let's not uh, stay here with Stevie getting confused out here. Uh, let's just simply uh, go ahead and get to the show. So I'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you have a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that out to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices that we track are trading the upside. That includes a spot volatility. Index. What's up there? Don't know, but we'll go find out. You've got the Dow up 47 points, about a little, a little over one-tenth percent, almost three-tenths for the S&P or 12 points, three-tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 51 points, one and a quarter percent for the Russell, 22-point move there. Semi's up nearly 2% or 70 bucks. Trend is up 137. That's nearly a 1% move to the upside. Gold's up 3 bucks. Silver's up 11 pennies. Lights we crude up 41 cents. Natural gas up a penny. 30-year Treasury printed out at 117.02. That is up 22 ticks. Leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside, you've got Workday Inc. up 25 bucks, nearly 11 Eleven percent Mercado Libre, twenty-one bucks, one and three tenths percent Crowd Strike, uh, Crowd Strike Holdings, nearly ten percent, twenty-one bucks. Uh, you've got Intuit up three and three tenths. That's nineteen dollar move there. United Rentals up uh, over three and a half percent, sixteen and change there. To the downside, the Shakers are J Bill off sixteen dollars and change, nearly thirteen percent. Humana down almost ten or two percent. Elevens Health down six and change, nearly one and a half percent. Meta down five and a half. About one and six tenths percent. And Costco's off five bucks and change. That's nearly a one percent move to the downside. But let's begin with. Uh, so you've got the spot politics trading a bit higher out there. I'll just take a quick peek, see what uh, that's uh, signaling to you and I. If anything out here, nothing that I see at this stage of the uh, game out here. Although I will say one of um, one of Garo's parabolic SAR dots formed yesterday uh, at the. Uh, below price out there. So the spot volatilities is suggesting to you and I a change in trend. Well, if it is going to have a change in trend, then what we do know, let's go ahead and switch panels out here. What we do know is that if that's going to occur, we're likely not to see the ES Mini take out its TD9 count top. Now, I don't know whether it will or it won't. We're going to switch over to those charts. we got the white background charts up on our screen right now. You've got the daily charts for the four equity future contracts along the top. You've got the weekly charts along the bottom. We take a look at the uh, daily chart for the ES Mini. What we know is that if price closes above the TD9 count top high, and that's uh, the high from November 22nd, and that's at 45.8050, that pattern will get negated, and that would suggest to run up to 46.4475. It's next TD9 count breakdown level. If in fact it holds, well, and especially if price can still remain below the bottom of its or the top of its profile out there. This is the ES Mini that we're taking a look at. The top of that profile is at 45.72. If price gets below that, okay, then the top that's in place here still holds. So something to think about. But we don't want to make that decision right now. We can make whatever decision you want. We can't make that decision until day's end. If there were to be a bearish reversal candle today, that would confirm a Roach Mintum indicator top. 
The same thing would be true inside the NQ. We can see that it's triggered a road momentum indicator top. It needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm that uh, topping pattern out there. It would negate its TD9 count top. It's already been tested, but so far it's been rejected with a close above 16,173.50. That's a real key number to be watching. Now, if price is able to negate the TD9 count top, and it should be able to do that. What we've also got today going on is a test rejection of its swing point from July 19th. But if price can close inside that swing point, and that would be at 16,115, even Steven out there, that would suggest a run for its high. Its high out there inside the NASDAQ is 16,264 and a quarter. Again, a bearish reversal candle at day's end would confirm a road's momentum indicator top. So far, resistance is held. So far, the topping patterns are still in play out there. We take a look at the Dow equity future contract. Yesterday, it negated its TD9 count top. And now what it should do is go target 35,757. 35,757 is its TD9 count, its next TD9 count breakdown resistance level. With regard to the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 is trading into trend line resistance. It's been trading in here for quite some time. If it can clear that resistance level, and I would say clear it would be a close above today's high so far. Certainly that would be clearing it. Today's high is at 1834. Um, where does that number really come into play, that trend line? I would have to say it's right at about the 1827 level out there. So a close above 1827 would be pretty bullish for the uh, Russell 2000, would suggest that it's A to B equals CD pattern that is in place out there is well underway. Now that A to B equals CD would get us up to the 1866.50 level out here. You know, I'm not going to spend much time on the weekly charts. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, you can see it does have that resistance at the 1841 level. 1841.90. Nothing inside the Dow Equity Future contract. Resistance inside the NQ is where it's trading into right now. The top of that weekly profile is at 16.13010. That's not so important today on a Wednesday, more important on Friday out there. But the reason I didn't want to spend too much time and take a look at the daily and equity and the weekly futures contracts is because I wanted to switch over and take a look at the DAX. And you might ask yourself the question, and that would be a good question, Steve-O, why we take a look at the German market out here? And the reason is, well, let me answer that question. Let's answer the question, why do we want to take a look at the German market out here, the German DAX? So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change windows. I'm going to go back to the black background screens. I posted these charts in the den earlier this morning when I saw what was unfolding out here. What I saw unfolding inside the DAX, and it's got a very strong move to the upside, is it was negating its TD9 count top. Now, you don't see that on this chart that we're looking at. What you see on this chart that we're looking at is a directional correlation over an average period of five days out there and bars that are above the zero threshold line out there tell us about a directional relationship between the DAX and the NDX 100 which one's the horse which one's the tail which one's the dog which one's the tail that I don't know out here but what I do know is we've got a good directional correlation and as we fl flip back to the uh, DAX charts out there the DAX is well I can't, can't guarantee you I think the DAX closes in 15 or 16 minutes out there if not it's in an hour and 15 minutes but if we take a look at the DAX out here, you'll see that it is negating its TD9 count top. As Tom likes to say, it's doing it in spades out there. So if the DAX is going to do that, odds would favor that the NDX100 will do that as well. We get back from this break, we'll finish taking a look at these charts, then we'll take a look at some requests that have come in. We'll take a look at BAC, HUM, PSTG, and anything else we can get our hands on. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So uh, when we went to that uh, break, we were just we're going to break. We're taking a look at the uh, charts here for the uh, DAX and the NDX uh, sign, uh, lined up next to it. We, we know about a very strong directional correlation, and so a good reason to be able to take a look at both. So when we took a look, we were looking at the equity future contracts earlier. These are the cash indices out here. Now, you can see you've got a TD9 count top inside the NDX 100. The only way that gets negated is a close above 16.119.32. What I noticed about the weekly chart here for the NDX 100 is you'll see it's got a TD9 count top. It's got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. That resistance level is the high at 15,932. Last week's close was 15,982. So those topping patterns have been negated. Now, you'll see Rhodes Mintum indicator signal is still present at the moment. But that requires a bearish reversal candle. This is signaling to you and I especially when we go ahead and combine this with the DAX out here, that the NDX 100 wants to move higher. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't see price pull back, maybe test the oscillator and change line, or maybe something else. It still has got that top in place. But if we do get a close above the TD9 count tops, whether it's the NDX 100 in the cash indice or whether it's the NQ, the ES Mini, and so forth, out there, that would tell us about that strong rally. And that strong rally... Um, you know, could take place just simply because of the seasonals out here. In order to show you the seasonals, we'll go back and take a look at those seasonals. Give me a moment. Let's change our screens out here. Um, and then I'll put that tool up on that screen so that we can take a look at it. The actual first seasonal that's going to pop up here, uh, and then I'll switch back to the uh, uh, to the NDX 100 as an example. Uh, this happens to be Goldilocks. So gold's forming a TD9 count pattern. We're going to take a look at that uh, today as well. But what you will see is that we are in the favorable seasonal cycle for gold, which basically lasts until about February 20th. So the seasonal, this is over a period of 55 years. So the seasonal, the bullish seasonal cycle for gold begins right around November 20th. And then it usually peaks out on average right around the uh, middle of third week of February out there. Now that's what it does over a 55 year period. The last quarter of a century, what we can see here is that seasonal period doesn't really start until about the December 15th time frame. Well, we know that's not the pattern that's following with the explosive move that we've seen out of gold here recently. But it also does show that gold typically rallies up into the February 23rd time frame out there. So just a little piece of information before we go back and take a look at Goldilocks's chart. But let's look at the NDX 100 out here. 
And so here's a NASDAQ 100. Let's see how many years worth of data. We can get 38 years worth of data out here. And this is the cycle that we're in as we speak right now. So this shows maybe a pullback for a day. Uh, into tomorrow and then it resumes uh, its move higher into the first week of December. All that makes sense with regard to window dressing and so forth. Then we get a decline into about the middle of December before price takes off to the upside. Now that's the NASDAQ 100. Each of the uh, indices do not necessarily look the same. Here is the S&P 500. Now we just did 38 years there. I can keep this. Looks like I can keep this on the same 38 year track out here. Here inside the S&P 500, the bottom typically comes comes in around October 26. That's when the exact bottom actually formed out here inside the uh, markets. So that's kind of a, a cool thing. And again, this shows just the seasonal cycle with the markets in this essence topping out right around December 5th, pulling back for a week or two and then moving higher out there. That's what the S&P 500 seasonal looks like. We could take a look at the uh, Dow, the Dow Jones, which negated its TD9 count top yesterday. Or was that? No, that was not the Dow. So here's the Dow charts. The Dow also forming that seasonal bottom right around October the 26th and then continuing to move higher. So the Dow doesn't have as much of a pullback typically as we took a look at inside the S&P uh, on average or the um, or the NASDAQ 100. But nonetheless, we're in that favorable seasonal time cycle, whether it's for the Dow, the NDX 100, the S&P or even Goldilocks out there. So just something for you to consider. Um, yeah, good. We were on that right chart. So now let's do what? Let's do the, let me close out those DAX charts. Let's get to some of the questions that have uh, come in. So let's get to those. The first one came from Duncan. Steve, want to take a look at Bank of America, BAC out here. Momentarily, we'll get to those charts. So give me just a moment if you would be kind enough to do that. And here we've got BAC. So we take a look at Bank of America. What do we know? Well, first, we need to populate the full set of charts out here. So what do we know? It is populated. No TD9 counts? Yeah, how about that? So all that's taking place right now in Bank of America is it is triggered. Right now, it's trying to take out resistance, which would be the top of its profile. That's at 3025. It's triggered a Rosemontum indicator signal, but that needs a bearish reversal. Ken, that's just a warning sign out there. That's like living in Florida and a weatherman saying, take your umbrella because it might rain. Basically, every day in Florida, it might rain. It doesn't rain all the time, all day long, but at some place, somewhere, we're typically going to see some kind of a shower out there. Now, Bank of America took out a B point that had formed on November 3rd. That B point had 62 million shares. It was taken out with 66 million shares. So there's an A to B equal CD to the upside that's already been confirmed out here, Steve-O. There's your A to B point or approximately it. I'm just simply going to move this over into the uh, C point out there. And you can see it gives us a price projection up towards 31.29. The actual next TD9 count breakdown level for Bank of America is at 31.40. So I'd say that a close today above the top of its profile or any day above the top of its profile at 30.25 is likely to continue that move to the 3140 level. There's nothing in the weekly chart to suggest that it shouldn't do the same. Its price target becomes 3111. So we got 3111, 3140. Uh, that's the range. Now, on a monthly time frame chart out here, the real key level with regard to Bank of America is that oscillator and change line. We can see that price has been below the oscillator and change line since February of 2022. And therefore, on a monthly basis, any close, not on a daily basis, not on a weekly basis, but on a monthly basis out there, what we've taken a look at is any close above that line. Now, that line out here is currently priced at $30.65. A close above $30.65 would signal to UI its intent to change its trend. However, if we take a look at uh, the monthly chart out there, you do have profile resistance up at 3201. So right now, if you take a look at BAC, it looks like strong like bull should head higher. Watch out for a bearish reversal candle. That would be the uh, signal that, uh, okay, it's got uh, some type. Oh, man, I was not showing. Oh. She's Louise. Okay, let me put those charts back up here. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Thought that I'd hit the switch button, and Stevie did not. I know that's probably got to drive you crazy out there. We'll do the quick version. You can see the C to D leg on the uh, uh, on the uh, daily time frame chart. You see the 3140 level. You can see the Rhodes momentum indicator signal. You can see the top of the profile 3025. Here you can see that on a weekly basis, price is going for 3111. That's especially true of price closes above last week's high. That's where we're trading above right now at 3025. And on a monthly basis, there's that oscillator and change line that has acted as resistance on its move lower. So any close above that is going to tell us about a 
change in trend out there. So I hope that helps you out, Steve-O, and everybody else. Sorry about having to repeat that twice. We will repeat that twice when we take a look at ticker symbol H-U-M. And this is the question here is from Zip. Should he stay or should he go? And when we take a look at Humana Inc., Humana Inc. gapping down today. Now, what we don't have out, so what Humana Inc. did was it traded into its TD9 count top. That TD9 count top that formed on October 17th. That's also a swing point. That swing point had volume of 714,000 shares. When that swing point was tested and rejected, it was with 986,000 shares back on November 27th out there. But it was also tested and rejected with, let's see, the volume on the trading day of November 24th. And that was with 312,000 shares. So that was a lighter volume test. I recall, yeah, much lighter. Well, so I don't really have the topping signal. Was looking really for that test rejection on lighter volume because of two days ago's trade volume. We certainly didn't get that. Should you stay or should you go? Here's what I can share with you. Price is still trading above where the sellers are located. And the sellers are located between, so this is between 487.91 and 493.28. And it's between that level because that is a daily bearish structured profile. What I mean about that uh, um, out there, Zip, is that the center of the profile is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside the range, the range of the top and the bottom of the profile. So if there's both buyers and sellers there, and there's only sellers basically up at the 493 level, that's why we call it a bearish structure. There's more sellers in that range out there. Now, because price had closed above the top of that bearish structure daily profile for more than two consecutive sessions, and quite frankly, it looks like two to three weeks out there, if it's only a counter trend move to the downside, I wish I could tell you whether that was the case or not, but if it's only a counter trend move to the downside, that's the area that price would find support. 487.91 to 493.28. So I don't know where you're in, what your time frame is. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, is there any reason, is there any signal out here to tell us to go ahead and jettison Humana? There's not. Price is trading with inside its profile. It's a big consolidation range, 467 up to 530. Price remains above that green oscillator and change sign. Those are bullish conditions. The monthly chart out there is also just a big old fat consolidation between 442 and 571.30 out there. So should you go or should you stay? Again, I don't know where you're in. I don't have the reasons to tell you to sell. That's for sure. If you close below 487.91 and you're trading at 500 bucks and change right now or 499.70 actually last trade fired off you know then you might want to be interested in in uh, selling out there final support though on a daily time frame if you decide to ride this is a 477.17 that is the bottom of that profile so zip i hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for if not right back and i'll try to get that for you the next instrument we're going to take a look at is ticker symbol pstg this is also for duncan steve inside the tiger's den pstg is what is it? It is pure storage out there. If pure storage is trading into a most recent swing point that could form the, uh, that is the B point of a potential. I say potential A to B equals C to the upside. Why is it potential? Because price has to close above it. Well, the swing point that we're talking about is November 15th. And that swing point has volume of 3 million shares, a little over 3 million shares. Today so far in trading, you've done 3 million shares. So price is moving into that swing point with volume. Even if it rejects it, by reject it, I mean it closed below the low at 37.47, price would still at least get a back up and test that swing point. A close inside the swing point at least says we're going to go test that high. Well, it's already tested that high today, Steve-O. Well, if it was really going to be a top, you would test and reject that 38.19 level on less than 3 million shares. You're not going to do that today. Looks to me like PSTG wants to continue to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Wow. Did I actually talk through that entire break? That's pretty wild out there. Obviously, my clock was uh, screwed up. That's the clock inside the brain here, I guess. So I don't think anybody heard me talk about PSTG. Is that, in fact, the case out there? Oh, son of a gun. What the Sam heck is Stevie doing? So um, I'm pretty sure that I spent that time 
speaking through that commercial, we heard you. What do you mean you heard me? So you just uh, played right through that? Is that the that's that's the deal, else I don't have to go back and repeat myself. I hope that's the case out there. Uh, but real quickly, here's PSTG. Just a, just simply uh, just a quick follow up. You can see it's trading into a prior swing point from back here on November the 15th. It's doing it with volume. Oh, good. No commercials. Oh, that's very cool. Okay, great. All right, so we'll uh, we'll just simply go on. So the next request is to take a look at Pfizer. This is for Johnny D inside the Tiger's Den. So let's get to the Pfizer charts out there. In the case of Pfizer, and what Johnny would like to do is go long. So what you've got inside of Pfizer, I don't have any kind of a bottom. Well, I, I take that back. Pfizer has a wave seven bottom. That wave seven bottom was confirmed on the trading day of uh, November the 14th. Price is now back inside its uh, profile level. So if you're looking to buy, the buy zone on this is between 29.18, 29.43, and 29.50, 29.50. Those would be the three levels. The first two that I gave you were the bottom and the center of its bullish structured profile, and that third was the oscillator and change line. So if you're looking to uh, put on a position, that would be an area to do that. We'll look at a short-term time frame chart, see if there's any assistance out there. The weekly chart has a confirmed TD9 count bottom. If we were to generate a bullish reversal candle, it would confirm a Roge momentum indicator bottom. And on a monthly chart for uh, Pfizer, it is going to complete a TD9 count bottom this month out there. So you got bottom signals on the monthly, bottom signals on the uh, weekly, confirmed bottom on the weekly, confirmed bottom on the uh, daily time frame. So let's go take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart, see if there's anything out here that Johnny D and I can glean. And as we open this up, we ought to get to the actual data. So we take a look at the data out here. What do we have? So I see this is a 30-minute chart. I don't have – so we don't have a bottoming pattern here to assist you. I don't have anything that's really a top. Um, so 30-minute chart's not going to help us out. Let's try the 65-minute chart, see if there's anything there. Why 65? Because it divides into a 390-minute day. And on a 60-minute time frame, 65-minute time frame, let's see, that low – 29.68, this close, 29.67. Nah, I don't even have a bottom signal there. So where I'd like, let me just go to a 15-minute chart. Let's just get really granular here. And on a 15-minute chart, there's where you've got at least a bottom. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Let price pull back. This suggests that price should pull back to the, around the 29.81-ish level out there. So you do have the, uh, look, you do have the buy your, your question was you want to go long, and I can see that with regard to the chart patterns that are out there with regard to uh, Pfizer. So now it's just a matter of where do you take that long position, where do you move in, and I think you just come back to that daily time frame, 29.18, 29.43, 29.50 would be the uh, range out there. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Johnny, and if not, write back and let me know. Mr. Bill wanted to take a look at the spot volatility index. He was wondering if there were any TD9 counts out there. So let's get over to that set of charts out here. Whoops. Oh, jeez. I clicked on the wrong button. We all see some light speed crew charts pop up. Simply because instead of clicking on VIX, I clicked on the U, and that was the USO. I don't know that these are the contracts inside the USO, and sorry about that. Steve's got a lot of sorries today. I think I should go back to bed. But now let's pull up uh, the uh, uh, volatility index charts. Now, we take a look at the uh, volatility index. That's going to be this chart here that will just simply expand out. We take a look at this, Mr. Bill. We do not have any kind of patterns, any kind of TD9 counts, any kind of anything out there. What we do have, at least on a daily time frame, is we have price that is rejecting that oscillator and change line. We can see that spot volatility index is below the oscillator and change line since the trading day of since the trading day of October the 30th. So I would say here, Mr. Bill, that the more important tool with regard to the spot volatility index is going to be the oscillator and change line. And price ran right up into that this morning. And so far, that area is held. Now, it being uh, $13.15. So if the spot volatility index were to close above 13.15, maybe it's 13.16 or 13.17, Okay, I don't know. Right now it's 1315 out there. If we're to close above that, then that might be signaling. So we mentioned that um, Agaro's, uh, he was the parabolic SAR tool. And I, for, for whatever reason, I have that turned down on the spot volatility. It's not this chart we're looking at, but on another set of charts out there. And that showed a, a bottom dot out there, which is suggesting that maybe there's going to be a, a change in trend out here. Well, we can go ahead and use that compi and combine that with regard to Stevie's oscillator and change line and say it closed above 13. 
Let's just make it 1307 just to be safe out there. A close above that today would suggest a move up towards its 50-day expense moving average. That's at 1557. Well, if it does that, that'll send the S&P 500 lower. That would also mean that the S&P 500 would retain its uh, TD9 count top which it may do. And if it generates that roads meant indicator signal, that top out there, then I'd say we're likely in store for a more prolonged top than just maybe a move back to support, which, by the way, inside the ES Mini is 4509. So I don't see anything else on my charts out here. Even if I look at the uh, December future contract out here, uh, that low was 1380. We closed yesterday on that contract, oh, right at 1380. So it didn't close below it. So the, the December VIX contract, Mr. Bill, has a TD9 count bottom. Now it needs to close above 1428 to tell us that there is a change in trend. The January 24 contract does not have a TD9 count bottom. It needs to close above 1595 in order to suggest a change in trend. Now, I don't know which contracts so this is for you guys at home especially if you want to trade the uvxy i don't know which contracts are a part of the uvxy right now odds favored december and january are somewhere in that mix so when would you want to consider taking a trade in the uvxy i would say that would be with closes above those oscillator and change line levels and that's why i spent time there so mr bill i hope that that helps you all provide you the information you were looking for with regard to the spot volatility index out there let me close out those USO charts. We don't need that hogging up space. And then let me get over to the VIX charts out here. And now let's get back to, let's see, we've got some new questions that came in. Um, Duncan Steve, I'm, I am bailing under for it. Great, Steve, thank you. You actually sleep. <laughs> that trend market bottom always on. Okay, uh, benign Pfizer too. Okay, so uh, there's no other requests? Oh. Son of God, I thought there were some other requests that had come in. Uh, oh, Microsoft. Nature wants to take a look at Microsoft. So let's do that. Let's get back to the Microsoft charts out there. And then I'll make sure I'll go through all the uh, pri all the messages that were in there, make sure that I've uh, uh, uncovered everything. So let's take a look at Microsoft, MSFT. Now, we know that Microsoft put in a top yesterday. Can't recall, was it a TD9 count top? Or was a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top? It was a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top, I believe. No, that's today. Yesterday was a TD9 count top. Today could be a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. That's where price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. And then we get that bearish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. So you've got your tops out here, it looks like so far, Nancy. What price should do if it closed below 388.18 is then test the next level of support. That's at 374.75. Below that, we're looking at a move to about the 367 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. So we're taking a look at Microsoft here. This is for Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, Nancy, um, the next area of support, just on an intraday basis, I know you're more of an intraday trader out there. We should see price get down to the 376.20 level. That's the 30-minute uh, TD9 count breakout area. But we've got tops in place for Microsoft on the daily time frame. We've got two topping signals. Does that make it better than one? Not that I've experienced. It just makes it a top out there. But price is still above resistance, and that resistance is the top of its profile, 374.75. So the overall signal is really neutral, folks. Not until price gets below 374.75 will it generate something other than a neutral signal. Let's take a look at the uh, banking sector, the regional banking sector. That is the KRE. This is for uh, Joey D. And if we take a look at this, the uh, KRE is trying to take out a swing point. That's a swing point from the trading day of November 15th. That swing point did volume of 20.7 million shares. So far today, you're up with 9 million shares. That says that this is trying to take out that swing point with volume. The top of its profile out here, Joey D, is 45.48. The top of that swing point, I believe, is also 45.48. So a close day above 45.48 with more than 20 million shares are going to generate a A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. If we take a look at what that would uh, give us as far as a price projection, we'll just simply do the A to B. I'll move this over to the C point out there, which means I've got to actually scrunch the chart, technical term, scrunching. You got to go to school to learn how to really do a great scrunching job. I, I didn't go to school for that. That's why it's kind of not such a great scruncher. But that would give us a uh, price projection somewhere in the $51 area. Now, before price gets up to 51, Joey, uh, price needs to deal with some sellers out there. No sellers happen to be at the bottom of its weekly profile, and that's what it's trading into right now. And that's at 45.63. So we're in a real strong resistance zone out here. If price can close above that 45.63. That would be a short-term positive. Now, price has been below. This is a bullish structured weekly profile. Price has been below that for more than two consecutive sessions. If it's only a counter trend move to the upside, then price would find resistance at 46.61. But you got battles at 45.63, 46.61, and then above that, 47.38. The daily looks good, but that does not mean that we can ignore the monthly, uh, the weekly time frame chart out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the regional banking sector. You just got some battles on your hands. Let's take a look at BTU. BTU, this is for, oh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the GDX. Let's look at the GDX. Uh, you know, this is for ELO and the Tigers, Den. In order to really look at the GDX, we look at this here, you're going to see a TD9 count top. But really to do a proper evaluation of the GDX, we should go back and take a look at gold and silver out there. Certainly gold because it's of its directional correlation. So here, ELO, here's what we know about uh, Goldilocks. This is the uh, February 2024 contract. Today is going to form bar number nine of a TD9 count. That says that gold should top out today or tomorrow. If it does top out today or tomorrow, the GDX should pull back just simply because of its directional correlation out there. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows us that what the heck? Um, 
uh, that, that shows us an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That A to B equals CD pattern to the upside gets us into about the 2150 type area. Now let's take a look at the GDX. So you got gold that's going to form a TD nine count top. The GDX formed a TD nine count top yesterday. And that, and so far, it's been pulling back. Now, that pattern would be negated with a close above yesterday's high, which is 31.23. Otherwise, price should pull back to test support. The first level of support right now in the GDX is the oscillator and change line. Those numbers will change as price moves up and down. But it's currently printing out at 29.47. So we want to watch gold to see if, in fact, it does form that TD9 count top. Remember, earlier in the show, if you were with us, we took a look at gold's seasonal pattern out there. We are definitely in the favorable seasonal cycle pattern for Goldilocks that lasts through February of next year out there. But let's respect the TD9 count patterns we've got inside of Goldilocks as well as the GDX. When it comes to silver out here, let's get up to the current information. Silver is testing and so far has rejected. There's no topping pattern. There's an A to B equals CD pattern. Needs a bearish reversal signal. But what we've got with silver is silver is testing two breakdown areas, 2547 and 2557. And when you get to a breakdown level, that itself can be a top. So we've got a top potentially inside of silver, a top potentially inside of uh, gold, and a top, potent not, not a top potentially, a top inside of the GDX. Again, we got to watch the high of the GDX because if price takes that out, that could be telling us something. But right now, it says prepare for some type of retracement out there. Hope that helps you out. Let's take a look at BTU. BTU, this is for Rose inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, I didn't spend time taking a look at the question. I was just trying to make sure I got all these symbols out there. Here's what we know about BTU. Bachman Turner Underdrive. And that is that it's formed a TD9 count top four days ago. It was bar number eight that identified that top. So Peabody Energy has got a top out there. Where should that top take us to? Rose, the first level that that top should take us to is about 2353. If price closed below 2353, you've got support at 2328. If price closed below 23, I'm sorry, 2338. If price closed below 2338, it's going to make a move to 2246 to the 2231 area. So on a daily time frame, uh, Peabody Energy has got a TD9 count top with price consolidating with inside those profiles levels. There's also a descending trend line that ran into resistance as well. I don't have that drawn in here, but you can visually see that. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, just a consolidation with inside its weekly profile, the same from a monthly standpoint. Real quickly, if we look at it, we don't have to do it quickly. We can just take a look at an intraday chart out here. This is the 15-minute time frame. Must be because of what I did last time. I don't see any signals there. But I'm going to change this over to the 30-minute time frame, see if there's any kind of message here for BTU. And the answer is a TD9 count top. And if price can uh, remain below 23.75, you're trading at 23.91 right now. I know it says 78 on my system. So watch that 23.75 level because if price closes below that, that should get you down to 23.43. So I hope that helps you out, Rose. Thanks so much for uh, being patient and waiting for me to get to that. Let's go to our next request, and this is for McGuppy. He wants to take a look at Nordic American Tankers. NAT is a ticker symbol. So we're going to have to go ahead and populate these charts here right now. That'll take just a few moments in time. And McGuppy. McGuppy says he sees some support, I believe, at around the 378 level. And McGuppy, I've got 379 as the next support area for natural for Nordic American tankers. So I'd say I like your 378. We're not going to worry about a penny out here. Uh, so if price closes below 379, no, that could be curtains out there. Well, not really curtains, curtains, but what that would say, let's open up the daily time frame, is that price wants to get back to at least test its recent swing point low. And that's right here. It's trading into it right now. That swing point has 2.7 million shares out there. So far for the day, Nordic American tankers, 6.5 million shares. So you know what that means, McGuppy. Even though 379 is support, you could, if you close inside a swing point, so the daily close is going to be important. If you close inside 382, you're 390 right now. If you close below 382, odds favor, you're going to go test that low, and that low is going to be 369. If you close above 382, because we have volume, that says that we should see at least that 382 level get attacked one more time. So you are looking specifically for the uh, support levels. Uh, you've got them, 371, 379, and of course we've got to take a look at that swing point low from the, uh, September 13th, and that's at that 369 level. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and I won't talk through this break here like I did a couple breaks ago. Cannot believe I did that. 
but uh, I'll be back and then we'll finish up the show. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before we get to the uh, U.S. dollar out there, Keysight Technologies was a request. Uh, does not have a topping pattern on the. I take that back. It. Uh, it does. It, it's got a sell the D point pattern out here. It was reconfirmed yesterday with that bear shooting star. What you need to see in order for this to get some mojo to the upside is simply a close above 38.50. That's the top of that daily profile. It should be able to do that. I don't know whether it will do that, but that's that's really where the battleground is right now. If it can do that, then price ought to gravitate towards the 156.77. You can see that you are inside a big, huge gap to the downside. That had some pretty big volume, 7.8 million shares on that gap to the downside. And side of keys so you got to expect you're going to have run into a bunch of turbulence as price gets into that gap let's go take that u.s dollar index for peter from park city and peter's question is basically hey yesterday the u.s dollar index negated its td9 count bottom and you are right about that peter here is the u.s dollar index and there was a td9 count bottom that formed on the 27th that formed on monday and then on tuesday and they gave that signal now what other bottom signals are there for the U.S. dollar index? Well, Peter, courtesy of the Chapman wave, although it may not be the rogue wave out there, we do take a look at that seventh wave move to the downside. And that's been triggered today. It was triggered yesterday out there. In order for that to identify a bottom, you need to see a higher low. 
Uh, so watch for that come uh, tomorrow's time frame out there. Your question was how far lower can this go? Well, you know, I'm also watching this support level out here, and that's the week of November 21st, and that's down at 147.15. And if price closes below that this week, that'll trigger a weekly A to B equals CD to the downside. Um, oh, that was a Japanese. Oh, geez, Louise. I thought it was. An, sorry, sorry, sorry. Woo, bad day. Bad chart day for Stevie. Here, let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart. Where is price headed to, Peter? It's headed to 101.60. That's assuming that we don't get a bottom out here, that wave seven bottom. Uh, now, a uh, buy a bullish reversal candle. Right now, it's a bullish piercing candle. That would confirm a buy the D point. Doesn't mean that it's going to be able to take out resistance at the 103.34 level. But to the downside, you were asking specifically about the downside. If we don't get a bottom signal here, 101.60 becomes the price target area. Phew, made it through that. Sorry, folks, for the um, not the smoothest show that Stevie's ever produced, but uh, we'll do better tomorrow. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Stay tuned for all the great programming. Be safe out there.